Hey guys, Beast here, and I want to touch on, yes, another BioLite product, but it's a little bit more geared towards preparedness. Um, you know, preparedness is something that has never left my mind every time I leave on a trip. Uh, if you guys have followed my channel for a long time, you know that, you know, I used to be kind of the lone wolf with the dog situation, and so my preparations um, have definitely changed. Now that I've got a home base, back here in Central Oregon, a fiance and three children. Every time we leave for a trip, every time we do something, that is still in my mind. You know, the adventure bus, whether it's an overland style or it's becoming a bug out vehicle, um, those are always things that are constantly running through my echelon of thought. Like what happens when this happens? What happens when that happens? Um, and today's product is no different. Now, obviously, during any sort of emergency, natural disaster, things like that, you're going to have your basics. You're going to want to have that water. You're going to want to have shelter. You're going to want to have a little bit of food. And then beyond that, um, everything else is a little bit more comfort items. But I wouldn't, you know, count out communication um, as any less important on that list. Uh, having a radio nearby, things like that. Having a little bit of lighting beyond a headlamp and a bug out bag, um, you know, not only is a, a safety factor, but it's that comfort factor. It's that keeping your family and everyone, it's that freak out level, right? Everything's fine. Why? Because we've got light, we've got food, we've got water, we're warm, we're going to be okay. And I think this touches on a lot. Now, it is about the size of a shoebox. I've since transferred it to one of these sort of yellow tops, smaller, I don't know what the dimensions is, you can pick them up at any Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, that sort of thing, uh, because that's where I store all my preparations are in those hard, you know, yellow top kits. They're, they're sturdy, you can stack a lot of them, and it fit that one perfectly. I will say over the last couple months of testing, the BioLite, the box that originally came in, has since fallen apart. Let's spin you around here and take a look at it on the table. All right guys, back on the table, of course, yellow top, little piece, labeled. Um, let's just kind of break into this and then we'll discuss what's in there. Uh, pretty simple. You're going to have three light setups. We'll talk about more of those in a second. Three main light sources, one control box, and then one six watt solar panel. All right, diving into the, uh, the main control box. I'll try to zoom in here, but it should light up when I'm uh, activating it. It'll give you the date, the time, everything. You can see when I recorded this. Um, the main light here, you've got several different modes, small, medium, and high. And uh, of course, the other thing you should be able to tell is it'll start telling you how much time you have on that mode till you're empty. So I'm currently at 83%. I don't have it hooked up to the solar panel. You're on high, so you got 12 hours till empty. There's low, you're gonna get 13, and it's gonna adjust. So there's 24, 20. It'll take a second to kind of re-acclimate. There we go, high is back down to 12. So it's a good estimate. You know, like, I don't have much juice left. Let's kick her down to low, and you can see low is back down to 18 hours till empty. Uh, pretty intuitive, then basically back off. Uh, if I zoom in here. You'll see the uh, radio controls, FM radio, volume up, volume down, pretty intuitive, easy. But again, like I said, communication in an emergency, uh, you can hook up an MP3. Uh, that is under an uh, SD mini card. Let me just turn this down here, turn that off. MP3 waking up, didn't find anything. I haven't been using the SD card in this. Um, you can see sort of battery, and then when I turn on or plug in the... Uh, the solar you'll see that solar let me see if I can adjust this just so you can see that a little bit better if I turn it down but there's your battery control and then the far side will let you know how much Sun you have and it would give you kind of an input of how long it's going to take to charge it it's a pretty smart little controller coming over to the side uh, it's pretty nice it's got USB out so you can actively charge your cell phones um, other products that are USB charger like I've been charging the BioLite 330 headlamp off of this and then as well as an expansion port if that six uh, watt panel is not enough you can put a little bit more into it now the battery inside of this guy is what they consider like a 20 watt hour but it really comes down to it's just over 3,000 milliamps that's in there uh, if you guys think about that that's basically one 18650 depending on 
on how much watts you have. So if you're gonna use this and all the lights, it just depends um, on the settings. I'll put in a, a small configuration here of what it would look like if you're gonna use it for as a multi-room. So you have enough lights to go from main panel to secondary room and even out to sort of an entryway with the motion detector. And with that, let's talk about the lights. All right, now you can see there's a lot of cables with this, but part of that is in that diagram you saw, you can get over to several different rooms and they all have their own controls and you can daisy chain them along. And so that's a really neat feature. Uh, with that just comes with a little bit of cable management and I'll put in a quick clip of how I do that. Hey guys, Beast here. And uh, while we've been testing this BioLite kit, uh, I've been trying to come up with a better way of doing things. And one of the things is Gear Snake tie downs. It's uh, Ultimate Survival Technologies. I've also found a similar product like this at the dollar store that's green. It's meant to tie up plants, but it's very similar to like a Night Eyes Gear Keeper. It's just a, you know, there's a chunk of wire surrounded by a nice soft rubber. And so what I've been doing is simply cutting these off into manageable sections to create little twist ties. And I'll show you how I wrap this up. I do kind of two smaller ones and one bigger one. And then as well, while you're kind of figuring this out, I usually start from the light and we're just gonna do a crisscross pattern. There's a little hook that's in the way. This is hard to do with a camera here. But I'm just gonna weave it in and out until I get to about the hub of the control panel. And I'm just gonna put one of the smaller twist ties in there. That locks that down. Now from the hub out, you're gonna have two different wires. One of them is going to connect to the switch controller. So we're gonna treat that as its own little cable piece here. So again, coming in here, figure eight, until I get to that controller, I'm gonna take the other smaller chunk and twist that down. Now back from the hub out to the longer piece. This is the piece that either is going to connect to the main 620 control box or it's going to get stretched out down the road to the next light as a daisy chain. Which is why I really love this system. They've thought about a lot, but trying to manage these cables can be tricky if we're gonna use this in sort of a non preparedness emergency if you're like I was trying to use them in in the adventure bus and it just became unwieldy so now I've got a nice neat organized package I've got one that goes control box one out to the switch and one back to the light and it just keeps them very well contained and organized when I pull them out to use them all right, now coming from the control box, again, you've got a lot of cable coming out to sort of the first hub. That hub is also where you can then daisy chain on the next one. Uh, coming down from where the light is, it could be a very tall ceiling, um, is going to be the controller. So in a permanent installation, if you've got a cabin out there or something, this is gonna be a long-term thing, you could screw this down onto a panel. They come with mounting hardware, so you can actually um, basically tack in the wires along the ceiling joists, and you could have this set up to a small little cabin, and you would have your own off-grid setup. Uh, for power and lighting, uh, which is pretty cool. I do recommend you probably get a larger solar panel if you are gonna be using all the lights all the time. Um, again, I'll put in a quick photo. It'll tell you how much on what level uh, these are going out, but I will say it's about 46 hours. This main unit will be charged on the six watt, but if you're gonna use it a lot, um, that little six watt, I wish you could expand out to a bigger battery on that guy down the road. But Again, for my purposes, for what I've been using in van life and for camping, uh, it's been perfect. I haven't overused the battery, um, even with the radio playing. Um, I will say that, you know, there's a lot of cables, as I just mentioned, if you're going to be tearing this down um, on a daily basis to break camp, it's maybe not ideal. But if you're going to be spending multiple days in one spot or family week, something like that, this is awesome. Uh, really gives you a lot of flexibility. Let's talk about the lights here. So while it's plugged in, again, quick tap, and it's going to turn on. If you click it again, you go into medium, click it again, go into high and then back off. Easy as chips. Um, there is one unit that has a motion detector. 
Again, so it comes on for about 30 seconds when it detects that motion. And so if you want to have this as an entryway, I've been hanging this near the front door, uh, side door of the van. And so as people have been coming in, that lights up the entryway and then it turns itself off. And then the rest of these lights have been hanging on the awning. Still working on an awning setup. Um, but for right now, this thing is going to get charged, packed up, and put in my preparedness box just in case we have a sort of grid down or we're out of power and we need some lighting. In fact, my shop here uh, does not have full power and lighting, so I actually used that for the first couple of weeks while we were building uh, my son's loft bed. And we were working out here late nights so that he wouldn't know that we were building a loft bed. We were using these lights in the garage because we didn't have any power out here. So there's the lights. Let's move on to the solar panel. Here you go guys, pretty simple. You can see by my hands, again, this is designed to fit in that little shoe box. It's only a six watt panel, but there is that expansion for larger panels down the road. Um, this is a hard panel. It does have a couple mounting points on the bottom. Put in a quick photo so you can see what the power looks like there, but you can stretch it out with cables. I've mostly been putting this on the roof of the van, haven't had it blown off or anything like that. It will recharge the head unit about four to six hours in full sun. It will also let you know on that display how much sun you're getting, which is a great, great thing. Uh, it gives you an idea. I guess my only drawbacks, I would really like to have a kickstand on here. I uh, recently did the video on the sunlight and they had not only a kickstand that you could position this thing in, but it also had that perfect like analog, analog sundial. So you really knew without looking at the display where that thing was aiming. And I just wish that this had come with that. Hey guys, that basically concludes the Home Light 620. Let me know if you have any questions. I think it's a pretty cool system for basically just easy preparedness, leave it in a box. I would probably charge the little battery in here at least twice a year, about every six months, like a lot of preparedness things, you know, check your battery levels. But again, if it goes dead, you've got that six watt panel. Um, my only critiques of the system is I wish that panel uh, had like the kickstand system. I think that would still fold up in that very small box. Um, the box did deteriorate as uh, I'll put in some photos. In fact, I used part of the lid for my screen door if you guys watched that video on Adventure Van Expo. Um, but if you're gonna be using this day in, day out, I would transfer over to basically a small plastic tote. Um, I think it has enough power to do everything I've been doing, but I have heard complaints of people trying to, uh, wishing that it had an expansion battery, that you could connect this to something else. But again, that'd probably bring up the price point uh, just a little bit more. This main unit you can use without all the globes if you don't need it. It's an easy unit. Like I said, I've got a magnet, it goes right on the adventure van. I've got radio that spools up. Um, I do wish I, the, if I'm not going to be using the FM um, antenna that I could wrap that up separately somehow or if it fit back here a little bit easier. But I'll slap this on the van, see if I can find some FM while I'm setting up the uh, campsite or getting the grill going or something like that and listen to the radio. If I need to, I will pull out the charger and I'll set my phone in the little tray. Um, or what I've been doing, like I said, is the uh, headlamp, my USB headlamp that I recently got from BioLite as well. Uh, we've been recharging that on there. and. It's a good system. It's uh, all the power I've needed for my conditions. We've used it in the garage, used it in the adventure van, and uh, it will be sitting in the garage ready to go next time we have an emergency. This has Wandering Beast for BioLite. See you down the road. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media and we'll see you on the road.